Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Still in Canada. Today, I am lucky enough that I have Bluebird with me, which uh, she's a Canadian right now in BC. And she has done some amazing adventures as well as she has approached distilling differently than any of us have ever even thought of trying. So we're going to touch on some of that. I've watched her YouTube channel and her YouTube channel is Brewbird, B-R-E-W-B-I-R-D. And if you look at it at the very beginning of it, uh, I think there was a bit of trying to figure out how you were going to approach this. And, you know, I've made fun with you several times on this, but a little bit of the first was some uh, cooking. And there are a couple of interesting recipes in there. And there's a couple that I don't think I would go anywhere near. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's good. It's entertaining. It's fun. But the world of, of doing a YouTube channel on food is, is, almost untouchable I and mean, you have companies producers large uh film projects doing food shows so you can also see that in between some of your food things you were doing some of the distilling things talking to distillers talking to distilleries the whole bit and then you sent some letters you sent some resumes how did you even think of sending resumes to well, a Scotland and Wales and all that. What brought that on? Okay, yeah. So I was a brewing student in Canada at Scotland Polytechnic University in the brewing program. And then I'd always wanted to go live in the UK because my family, my two brothers and my parents, uh, they lived there for like, well, my parents lived there for over a decade uh, and then my both my brothers were born there. So I was the only one that missed out on this UK experience. So I wanted to try living there as well. And then uh, when I was in brewing school, I just saw the stills and I thought they look so pretty. And I thought distilling looked easier than brewing as well because <laughs> there's less cleaning. Uh, so then I was like, well, you know, the UK distilling those two go hand in hand. Like the UK is famous for like, well, Scotland for Scotch whiskey and England gin is really popular. So I thought, okay, that makes sense. I'll try to find a job at a distillery in the UK. So that was the initial idea. And then I just went online and searched up uh, gin distilleries, whiskey distilleries in the UK. And I sent emails to all of them, uh, just seeing if anyone would take me on. And then in the end, I got a reply back from that Scotch whiskey distillery in Scotland. So I went to go work there. So yeah, sitting in Canada and you realized almost everybody who watches my channel, it's their dream to go work in Scotland and, you know, learn from the masters. And yeah, you just happenstance. Yeah, I made beer. Let's go do this. Yeah, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. So you you better just try, you know, even if you don't, nothing happened and everyone said no, at least I could say to myself, like, okay, I tried. I don't need to feel bad about it or have any regrets. <laughs> and yeah, and so you started in Scotland at your first distillery and you've been to a few. I mean, you went from Scotland to Wales, you've been in Britain. Uh, so let's let's see, what was the first distillery? The first distillery was uh, the Borders Distillery in Hoyk, Scotland. Uh, yeah, and we, they made or we made Scotch whiskey there, of course. Uh, and then we used that base spirit also to make gin and vodka. And we had a Carter head still there. Excellent. And, you know, that's one thing. Uh, most distilleries, craft distilleries in uh, Canada and Ontario especially, they purchase GSN, so a, a grain neutral spirit. They bring it into their distillery and they use that as a base for their gins. Uh, and it's not a popular thing to do in the UK. I know that they make their own base spirit. So it is a different flavor. You know, a lot of the distilleries here, the base flavor, it's all the same. It's all bought at the same place. So uh, we don't do that at Silver Fox. We actually use our, our vodka base uh, just so that we stand out alone. Yeah. Well, no, I have to disagree with you there. I think a lot of UK distilleries do use uh, 
NGS, neutral grain spirit, uh, to make their gins especially. So that was one of the special things about the borders is that we use the base for that was for our uh, Scotch whiskey also to make uh, the gin and the vodka. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah, I don't know uh, any of the smaller ones I've talked to. I were definitely making their own. So it's kind of neat to hear there's still that same thing happening over there as well. So from Scotland, after making a whack of scotch, doing some barrels. So we've seen you doing some barrels on your YouTube channel. And, you know, uh, and did you buy a barrel? Yes. Yes, yeah. it's mine. I'm patiently waiting for it to mature now. Um, yeah, I think I've got another nine years and a bit to wait until it's ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we saw you fill it, and you were, you were a couple of episodes where you're doing that. And, you know, you guys that are following Still in Canada, go to Brewbird's channel and see some of this. It's, it's fascinating. It's, uh, you know, stuff we dream of and enjoy. Uh, so from there, you went to Wales. Yes. Yes, I was actually going to go a lot sooner, but then because of lockdowns and things, I couldn't go. Um, yeah, and then I went to Wales. I spent three months working there, um, and they also wanted to make uh, Welsh whiskey there, uh, and they made a lot of gin. It was like a contract gin distillery, so they made gins for a bunch yeah. of different gin brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from there, where'd you go? Sorry. And then from there, I um, went to the Shakespeare Distillery in Stratford-upon-Avon. Uh, and if anyone doesn't know, that's where William Shakespeare was born. Uh, so that's their claim to fame. Uh, and then they were just starting out making rum. And then I happened to just email them at the right time. And he was like, okay, this is perfect. You can help us make our rum. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, la I'm laughing because I have watched the videos. And yeah, there's, there's some very good moments in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was like, wow, this is kind of kismet. So I got to learn how to make rum while I was there. And we did like small scale distillations in their gin school room with a lot of copper alembic stills. And then we uh, scaled that up uh, on our big fermenter, which fit 2000 liters. And then we had a 500 liter ice still. Um, and then the boss also came to me one day and was like, you know what? I was just thinking, I also want you to come up with some limoncello recipes and try to make amaretto. So uh, I, d I got to do that too as well. So it was pretty fun working there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, you know, and how did your fingers survive? Because we are doing an orange cello right now in our, our distillery and my, my hands are getting sliced all the <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. I feel your pain, though, really. I only did it. I only had to peel a bunch of lemons one time, though. And I, uh, we only were doing the small scale experiments. So it wasn't like we were making huge 100 liter batches. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, I, I know when I was using the peeler, I'd always like miss and then like get my hand a little bit. That happened a lot. Yeah, we're uh, we're looking at ours, and, now, and we're into thousands of oranges now uh, because we're doing a large batch. But we're looking after you peel it, and then you've got all that white pith, so you get the knife down, you start scraping the pith off and all that. And uh, I am getting really sick of eating oranges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. What do you do with all the extra oranges? You just eat them? Uh, you freeze them? Yeah. Yeah, we've eaten them. We're fro uh, froze up. I, we got a fruit cocktail for I don't know how long. Uh, we're doing gins coming up shortly, and we're going to be doing a bunch of videos on that. So not only are we we're doing oranges, tangerines, uh, navels, and grapefruit, and you know, and some lemons as well. So we're we're doing all that, and yeah, it's it's been a mess for the last little while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. So so you know what you though your approach on your channel is really novel it's it's you're explaining it you're showing it and you're taking it from a different views perspective than most others 
uh, which is entertaining and quite fun. And we get to see you learning. Now, you've taken the first distiller's exam and you're past that. You're working up for your second. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got the second module in June, so I'm studying for it now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and is that all remote or are you, uh, do you learn remote or do you have to go somewhere for that? Oh, it's like a like an online study package that they give you. So you can kind of long, log in, sorry, uh, to the site and all the study materials are there. They have like practice questions, practice exams to give you a feel for what it's like. And then also when I worked at the Borders Distillery, one of my coworkers uh, was taking it as well. Actually, I should mention that at the Borders Distillery, they sponsored all of us to take the IBD exam. Um, yeah, so that's actually the reason I took the first one. And then when I passed it, I thought, well, I might as well continue to finish it and try to get the diploma in distilling. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's a huge uh, uh, leg up for a lot of other people you're going to go up against in the future. So after, uh, after that distillery, where else did you go? After uh, the Shakespeare distillery, I was, because my visa was until the end of April. And then, uh, so I didn't really want to leave right away if I didn't have to. Uh, so then someone reached out to me because they had seen me on my YouTube channel. Uh, and he was in Manchester. He was a distillery manager at Boostown Gin. And then he said, oh, I saw you on the channel. I'd like to come drive down one day and bring some of my gins that we're making at Boostown to show you. And then, you know, we can talk about it. So he wanted to come visit me. But unfortunately, we went into lockdown again in the UK. So that wasn't possible. And then I, because my contract at the Shakespeare Distillery was three months again. Uh, so then I thought, and then I was going to go somewhere else initially, but it fell through. So then I thought of this person and I thought, oh, maybe I'll try to contact him and see if he'll give me a job for a little bit. Uh, and then I messaged him on Instagram and he spoke to his boss and he said, sure, come up and work for a little bit at our distillery. So I went up to Manchester and that distillery is very small and it's inside of a pub. So they let me live in the flat above the pub while I work there. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it so was, it was uh, you, interesting. You had, to have, you had to have everything ready in the morning for everybody. Everything ready in the morning? No, not really. It was pretty chill there. <laughs> well living right above you're the closest one there i thought you'd be down turn the lights on getting the whole place ready oh i guess i do do that <laughs> but yeah the in the restaurant they like start quite late in the day so i only got, i only we only started at work at 10 a.m so it wasn't really yeah. much <laughs> So I'm I'm looking at uh, your website, and uh, I mean we have a mutual friend, uh, Jesse, and uh, you know you, you talked to him a few weeks ago, which is kind of neat. And you know, yeah, once again, folks, if you get a chance, uh, most of you know still it, uh, but go to uh, Miss Brewbird. Although I think it's just it's accessible if you just type in Brewbird on the YouTube channel, and you'll see all her videos, and you know. You've even run, and this is something I've never done. You've even run an air still. Oh, yes. yes. So how do, now you've used that for doing a base idea of, of the flavor, and then you moved up to a bigger unit. So have you run the same recipe in the air still as well as into a, a bigger unit? Um, No. We didn't get to that stage before I had to leave to come back to Canada. Uh, but yeah, I'm always a little bit surprised at how interested people are in, are in the air still, to be honest, because it's just, 
it's very simple. It's kind of like a kettle. You just fill it up, you press a button, it comes out. End of story, really. Uh, <laughs> it's not very hard to use at all. No, it's a simple, it's a simple contraption to use. But the neat thing about it is it has a built-in condenser. So as the vapor goes up, the fan's cooling, it's air cooled on the copper tubing, and it comes out. So it has it has all the base needs of what you do to need to distill mm -hmm. something. Uh, and once again, I have never used one, but I'd be really curious to see uh, what comes out of the air still would be comparable to what would come out of a hundred liter still. Uh yeah, I don't know if that's a, a useful thing or not. I use a glass still. I've got a two-liter glass still I use to give, uh, when I'm working on gins, I do a botanical from that. That gives me that idea. And then from my glass still, I step up. Uh, typically, I'm running about 20 uh, different batches. And I'll pick the batch I really like and just mm -hmm. scale up all the botanicals and then do another test in a 100-liter still. And I do that before I hook into the 1,300 liters. So... Uh, or even if I combine both, I could run 2,600 liters. So yeah, I step it up to, to see, and I just wonder if the air still would be reproductive enough to, you know, entertain trying. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Cause I haven't done it. I've only used that. I was only, uh, there for the small scale tests. But then I also have used the air still, still just to make like flavor concentrates, uh, which we would then pour into the NGS or mix with to make gin. Uh, yeah, so I can't say. But how is your stepping up process with the glassware? Uh, the glass, I, there is a difference. When I go from the two liter to the hundred liter, there is a difference. So you pick your lighter flavors and you have to go a little heavier on those. And uh, because they just get lost in the larger setup. So yeah, we just increase the lighter flavors in order to get what we want. It It's great for giving us a representation of how it's going to come. And you just make the modifications. From the hundred liter still to the 1300 liter still, it's a straight scale almost. Uh, we almost don't have to change anything. Uh, now, I've seen you did a, a Deserano. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You want to explain a little further on that? Um, I, I don't know how to make it. I mean, I think if you actually watch the video, I fail at the end. And I'm like, yeah, it didn't really go the way I was hoping it would go. Uh, yeah. It was but, basically and, just a failure, and that's why I touched on it is because you're not a, you're not afraid to show that you've run into problems, or uh, you know it's not a this is perfect every time YouTube channel, which is great. It's you know we learn. I thought well personally, I'll learn far more from a mistake than I will uh, an absolute uh, you know success. Uh we've seen where you have had molasses all over the floor and yeah, that's rightly so you're, you're at the bottom of the ladder. So you're the one cleaning it as well. <laughs> and you, you know that uh, in distilling 80% of the job is cleaning, especially when you're the new one. Uh, so we see you do that, go through those trial tribulations. You have been an inspiration to me anyways. I, I've watched uh, your videos and to actually see you, achieve what you have uh you know uh you're you're in bc you apply to some distilleries you're in scotland and you move around you're learning hand over fist your, your accelerated learning has got to have been just a great base for you as you move along yeah i did think the same thing too when i had this idea like oh my visa is two years wouldn't it make sense to try to work at as many distilleries as possible because then you can just learn on all these different pieces of equipment and uh, different production sizes and the way that the different distillery owners think about things and approach their business. So I, I did think like, oh, this is actually a really good idea, which is why I did it the way that I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you nailed it. There's a lot of guys out there and, and women as well, because uh, I do have women on the channel that would just love to follow in your footsteps. But I think you you made a mold that was 
specifically for you, and you were very successful with it. I don't think many others are going to be able to follow in those footsteps. So you're back in BC. Uh, the COVID drove you back. And do you have plans on going out again? Um, if I can, yes. Uh, I might have to stay here for a little bit um, and get a job. Uh, and I, but I'll probably still be documenting wherever I start working. Um, yeah, but then I do, I've always wanted to go live in Japan. Uh, and so hopefully one day I can, one day soon I can work there at a brewery or a distillery for a little bit. And then I don't know, I might be going to the Bahamas in June because it was one of those things, you know, where well, my subscriber was like, I saw your channel. Uh, I'm starting a distillery. Do you maybe want to come and help with our gin production? And I said, yes. But then at the same time, I, when people just like randomly contact you on the internet, you're like, is this, is this a scam? Is this real? So I might be going. I might be going. It's not. Yeah. It's, well, you're going to. You're going to do your background checks, make sure you're safe. But you know what? Uh, for everybody that's watching this video and, and they're at my YouTube channel, what would it be like to just have a letter saying, hey, come work at my distillery down in Barbados? You know, yeah, we're doing rum, but we want to get into some gin. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, is the hammock included? I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A little my times on the beach, you know. It's yeah, that'd be a rough way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have you always been this lucky in life? I mean, <laughs> this falling in your lap? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. It's really because of the YouTube channel. Once I started it. And then suddenly it's like, oh, all these people contact me. And it's like, oh, all these like interesting things start happening. And you're like, wow, this is uh, the, one of the best decisions I ever made to start this YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, right now you've got, and it's jumped quite a bit. You've got uh, 2,880 uh, subscribers. Mm -hmm. So 2.18. And that's jumped a, a lot since uh, you were on interview with Jesse. Uh, once again, he's over 150,000 people. So yeah, a lot of people come visit you from there. Uh, so not a lot in, in the grand scheme of it. Not a lot. Uh, I suspect by the end of this year, you'll be over 50,000. So, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It it does go exponentially. Uh, once you get to a certain spot, then it starts going out more and more and more. Plus, uh, and where I failed uh, with COVID over the last year and owning a distillery, uh, even with 18 hour days, I was incapable of staying on top of my YouTube channel, which is a shame. Uh, that one, that one still disturbs me quite a bit. Uh, this is a joy for me to do. And you must, I believe you must do at least one episode a week. So, uh, you know, it, it just to keep the attention, to keep the momentum going. So we're back at it. We have a little more free time. Most of our uh, uh, COVID concerns are starting to drop down. So we get a little more free time to do this. Uh, and once again, I, I watched you and I looked at your, uh, your videos and going, wow, she is such a fascinating woman. You know, I just want to spend a little time with her. So right now you're back in BC and are you working at any of the local distilleries, breweries? Well, I'm just focusing on my exam for June and then I might go away to the Bahamas for that job that I mentioned earlier. Um, so I don't want to find like a more permanent position now because I don't think that would look very good if like in one month's time I had to leave for several weeks. Um, yeah. yeah. And then actually I was filming uh, because, you know, I went to brewing school here. And so I have a lot of classmates that are working at different breweries in Vancouver. So when I came back, I asked them if I could come visit and film them making uh, different beers. So I filmed a lot of stuff with them and I'm currently just editing it 
right now. Um, yeah, but so this channel is going to evolve a little bit and include brewing uh, shortly. <laughs> Yeah, and that's great because you have the background and it's ideal. And your approach to it lends too very well to what you're doing. Uh, if you, by chance, any of your friends are going to be doing a Hefeweizen beer, I'd Ooh. be very interested. Yes. <laughs> so if you want to record a Hefeweizen uh, episode, you got me for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we've got like a bunch of loggers. I have like a blackberry kettle sour uh what else do we make a saison but no hefeweizen Not yeah yet. yeah no that's one of my favorite springtime beers uh we will be looking at it at some point when we do go to expand uh, silver fox we are going to expand it with a brewery as well so that is a, another side uh which you know no one has really seen anything i've done with the beer and for good reason. Uh, I, it's a distilling channel. It's for that interest. So we kind of made sure none of the beer stuff gets shown. Uh, although the processes are very similar. You know, mm -hmm. just, uh, yeah. So a Hefeweizen wasn't around when I was doing beer. So I really want to do one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that style as well. It's very refreshing to drink. Yep, yep. It's a great, you know, early summer beer. Um all right, so what's next for you? What's next for me? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep grinding with the YouTube channel, uh, get more experience. Like I don't have quite enough experience yet. Um, and then maybe, maybe I'll become like a distillery brewery consultant, or maybe I can do this channel full time and just go hang out with different brewers and distillers and record how they make things and share it on YouTube. So well, I think that's kind of what I'm thinking for now. Yeah, that, that's a win-win for all of us. <laughs> if you keep going that. And you know what, you've, like you said, you've already had the one fellow down. I uh, was going to come down and talk to you about the gins and that. Uh, so there are people seeking your advice. You have, you have a vast array of different learning. So you haven't been pigeonholed into one mindset, which is a novel way for you to be. Uh, you know, you can explore different things, bring different things to the table, which is, you know, that's attractive for a lot of distilleries. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to look at your channel again over here. Uh, yeah, your spice for I love the rum episodes. They were just, I, I'm sorry, I was laughing at some of them. So I was enjoying them quite a bit. I've worked molasses. Yeah, I grew up on molasses. So yeah, I know. Yeah, you got one here marked molasses disaster. Uh, yeah. Folks, if you want a good enjoyment, go read, go watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we have like a lot of banter at the Shakespeare distillery. And I think that really comes through in the videos. And how long did it get? Uh, did it take you to get all that sugar off your arms? A while, a while. I, I think we had to mop the floor like five, six times before like it stopped being sticky when we walked on it. <laughs> so this is twenty eight minutes. Uh, I didn't want to take much more than an hour with you. I uh, appreciate you coming in and spending a little time with us. Uh, folks still in Canada, uh, head on over uh, in YouTube, search Brew Reard, B R E W B I R D. There's some incredible ones. Uh, you'll have some entertainment uh, with the first few, but yeah, it's uh, it's not. It's an honest look at how things work. You know, it's it's not a hidden. This is the recipe. This is what we followed. It's a full. Uh, learning experience for all of us. So, Miss Bluebird, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me today.